if you lift a heavy weight, I'm turning on mTOR within my, within my skeletal muscle. If I do enough weightlifting or if I do enough exercise that I've changed the metabolism within my body, I will simultaneously turn off mTOR in my liver and I'll turn off mTOR in my, in my adipose tissue. And then there's going to be signals that also reach the brain that turn on mTOR in the brain. So what we get isn't just one spot where we get activation or inactivation. I'm going to pivot into some of your research as we were talking about before. There's so much that we want to dig into. You've had such a prolific career, so we're probably just going to scratch the surface. But your PhD work focused on the effect of resistance exercise on specific molecular markers related to muscle growth. During this time, you made that landmark discovery that the mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR, complex one, was activated in response to resistance training, and that activation was proportional to the load across the muscle. So I would love if you could give our listeners a bit more background describing that work, what mTOR is, as well as its significance. Sure. So, so what, what this complex is, this mTOR complex one, is it's probably to people who like longevity, they already know that it's going to be the mechanistic target of rapamycin. And rapamycin is this drug that is probably the best biologic that has been, that has been developed for increasing longevity. And so... What the interesting thing is, is that taking rapamycin is yet the primary reason that it's good for longevity is it's going to blunt a lot of this baseline increasing of, of inflammatory signals that are going on in the body. Well, what I discovered, what we discovered during our, my PhD is that when you lift a heavy weight in the skeletal muscle that you are working, you're going to activate mTOR complex one. And that's directly proportional to the increase in muscle mass that you're going to get. And so if I want to build up bigger, stronger muscle, I need to have, I need to be able to turn mTOR on within that muscle at specific times, at least a few times a week. And so, so that's then now contrasted with the idea of, I just said that muscle strength is, is really important for longevity in people then strength is going to be, you need to turn on mTOR, but then this longevity drug turns off mTOR. So, so that's where this really real complexity within the system comes in. And, and really what happens is that when we lift a heavy weight, when we do some sort of an activity, and, in, and the opposite is actually true when we do endurance exercise, but we can talk about that later. If you lift a heavy weight, I'm turning on mTOR within my, within my skeletal muscle. If I do enough weightlifting or if I do enough exercise that I've changed the metabolism within my body, I will simultaneously turn off mTOR in my liver and I'll turn off mTOR in my, in my adipose tissue. And then there's going to be signals that also reach the brain that turn on mTOR in the brain. So what we get isn't just one spot where we get activation or inactivation. And so what we get is a combination of things that are physiologically this perfect storm where we're turning on mTOR in a place where we're going to grow that muscle. We're turning off mTOR in places where it has metabolic, it has potential for onco you know, oncogenic, it has other potentials within your body, and we're turning it off in those locations. So we're actually serving a little bit like a, uh, a non-pharmaceutical rapamycin when we do these types of things. The same thing is actually true with endurance exercise. So when we do endurance exercise, we're actually turning off mTOR in a lot of different places within our body because it's a huge metabolic stress. We're using lots of energy to run or to walk or to go up it, to hike or to do whatever our activity is. And in doing that, what, what happens is that a lot of the tissues that are normally seeing lots and lots of blood flow and lots and lots of nutrients, they're seeing much less of the, much less of that nutrient. mTOR gets turned off in, in response to that. So when I go out and I do, say, I go out on a big bike ride and I, I ride a bike for an hour, and what I'm getting is I'm getting within my body lots of areas where mTOR is turned off, a few areas like in my brain where it's turned on. When I lift a heavy weight, I'm going to get in the muscles that I've exercised. I'm turning mTOR on in those muscles, and that's going to be really important because it's going to give me a bigger muscle. And I'm also simultaneously turning off in places where it's not necessarily as good for my health and longevity. Yeah, and so, so oh, that's where that physiological component of it comes in. Sorry. Yeah, that that's, uh, makes a lot of sense. And tissue specific is definitely, uh, I assume, what's happening. And it's not like uh, 
mTOR is good in uh, only good or only bad, it's, uh, it's the balance between tissues and timing. So my question is about rapamycin. In a way, it's, uh, it's supposed to inhibit mTOR all over the body. So how, how can we explain that in comparison to what you explained to us that it's uh, tissue specific? Right. So, so the level of rapamycin, first of all, for that people use for longevity is much lower than they would use for rejection of a kidney, for example, because yeah. that's where rapamycin was traditionally used is when you got an organ transplant, because there would be an autoimmune response, you would use rapamycin to block the autoimmune response. So in that situation, there's a big immune signal, you need a high rapamycin level. When you're taking it for longevity, it should be a very, very small dose. And it's really a small dose and it's going to do primarily what we're doing when we're trying to prevent kidney rejection. What it's doing is it's decreasing the global inflammatory signal because the, inf the inflammatory system or the, 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 the inflammatory cells, they need rapamycin to grow and to have an immune response. Yeah. Well, in, when we have excess in nutrients or so dietary excess or we have all of these different things happening or we have stress, what we tend to get as we get older is, is the inflammatory signals within our body tend to get higher. And, and that can lead to a number of different problems within our body. So type 2 diabetes, again, is very strong inflammatory signal there. Osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, all of these signals are very strong inflammatory signals. So if we have a low dose of rapamycin to bring those down, the idea of the low dose is it's low enough, it can bring down basal throughout the whole body. But then if I do something specific, like I lift a weight with my, with my legs, it shouldn't necessarily inhibit. Experiments haven't been done to, to really show this sufficiently, but it shouldn't necessarily inhibit the ability of that muscle to grow. We do know that rapamycin does have some negative effects on skeletal muscle, even at the low dose that's used for, for longevity, but it also has the ability to overcome some of the negative components as you get into these advancing age situations. So what we say is that, look, rapamycin is a drug that people use. They pe people can use it, but if you're going to go out and you're going to do, say, an hour of endurance exercise or a little bit of a day, you're not going to need the rapamycin because that hour of endurance exercise is probably going to do more of the anti-inflammatory is probably going to give you more of that overall positive signal than that rapamycin that's going to give you a, the same signal throughout your whole body is going to get for your for your adaptations and for your longevity. Okay, and uh, we interviewed Neil Barzilai, which I assume that you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, a few weeks ago, and uh, what he said about those drugs is it's not only a, a, a the uh, uh, tissue specific is also the age of the person. And he said that uh, uh, in his opinion, uh, uh, consuming rapamycin or metformin, is, it might be good for the elderly, but it's definitely not good. Let's go back to your analogy of, I don't know, LeBron James. <laughs> you know, right. the, the, the NBA player shouldn't take it. It's more for longevity and you should take it in the uh, older age when uh, uh, the system is not. Uh, do, you, uh, do you agree with this? Uh, Statement. Yeah, so so there's really good data on metformin that it doesn't really work if you're not in a diseased state. So if you're a totally healthy person, you're you're got a normal BMI, you have you're re, you're reaching physical activity guidelines. There's no benefit to having metformin. There's a number of different studies that have shown that. Again, something similar is going to be present for rapamycin. Well, what you do is you use those if you are. The reason that we would have them is if you're unable or unwilling to, to exercise. And, and hopefully it's that you're unable to exercise because you have something else. That's another tool in your toolbox that has a similar function to some degree, but it doesn't have the same overall function as, as doing that exercise component. Sounds good. And how about it being proportional to the load of... Yeah let's say weight or resistance yeah. that you would put on your muscles. So when we first, when we first did the experiments, we would do it so that we would have a much heavier load on, on, certain, on certain muscles than on other muscles. And so what we could do is we could actually see the, the muscles that worked the hardest got the biggest mTOR signal. But as we go back and we look at that data with, in hindsight, what we realize is that part of what we were seeing there was the mTOR signal, but part of what we were seeing was the injury to the muscle. So the harder the muscle worked, the harder the load was, the more injury, the more 
damage there was to the muscle because the muscle had never done that exercise before. So when you have a lot of damage, you're going to get an immune response. The immune system is going to, when we take out a muscle and we just powder it and we look at what the mTOR activity, now if it has lots of immune cells in there that have been activated, it's going to have a higher immune system or higher mTOR signal. And so what that would suggest to us is that part of what we were seeing was that the heavier load led to more injury. The more injury also was a contributing factor to the increase in mTOR levels. But we do know that even after you've done lots of exercise, you're not getting as much injury, you're still going to get an activation of mTOR. The other thing that we know is that if you then supplement with a protein source, the protein is also going to activate mTOR, but it does it in a different way. And so the result is that the resistance exercise activates mTOR the same way that, say, insulin or IGF-1 would. The amino acids activate mTOR in a different way. The two things sum up to, be, to, to activate mTOR to a greater degree. And the result is when you lift weights with protein, you get a bigger muscle. Okay, so, so we do know that the mTOR is important for that growth, but it's that initial signal that we found in the first paper was probably an overestimation as to what happens just because what we were also seeing was that we were getting injury there.